Well, <laughs> thank you. Uh, visualize the following. I'm teaching a course in international marketing and business. And to students or to business executives, right? And the topic of culture comes up. And then I'll ask them, would you be kind enough to mention countries of low culture and also countries of high culture? And to my amazing surprise, people will mention countries. And then I usually tell them, well, there is no such a thing as a country of low culture or high culture. There is no good culture or bad culture. There are no better cultures or worse cultures. They are just different, right? And, um, and there they are. And this is exactly what I would like to talk about, because there are cultural differences, right? And there are two concepts, both of them really unfortunate. Uh, one of them we use in an unconscious way, but let's analyze first the first one, which I definitely believe it's a sad concept. It's called ethnocentrism. What exactly does that mean? It means that a culture believes that its culture is superior to others. Well, that should not be like that, because first we would have to analyze the definition of culture. So what is culture? Uh, the one that I use the most uh, definition would be the sum or the set of customs, habits, traditions, belief systems, and values of a particular group of people. I insist on that because it can also be of a country. But within a country, there's a dominant culture, there are microcultures and microcultures, right? And so it can be within our own country that we have these differences. Now, uh, when a country says, my culture is superior to yours, that's unfortunate. And history has proven to us that this exists, actually even up to date, right? Even today, there are countries or groups that believe they are superior to others. That shouldn't be like that. Another definition I know of so many there are about cultures is a very short one, a simple one, but it's a very good one. And it's uh, the way we do things around here. So who are we to say that my way of things doing around here is better than yours? It's basically impossible to say, right? Possib impossible to think like that. And the other concept uh, I want to talk about mostly is called self-reference criterion. Now, these two concepts, ethnocentrism and self-reference criterion, might overlap. And the self-reference criterion is usually unidentified. We, we do it, all of us, we do it. We do it all the time without even realizing it. I'll get to it in a moment. But we should identify it. We should know what it is and then we can keep it in check, right? And that is not necessarily true, as many of us know. So if you are aware of the self-reference criterion, you think like that, you might take advantage of it and say, I'm going to keep that self-reference criterion in check. And what do I do then? I might adopt the product or the marketing mix or the commercial offer or uh, the way of managing a business to the culture I'm dealing with, right? That would be a smart move. That would be practical and good, intelligent. Now, um, sometimes they overlap, right? Because the self-reference criterion, sometimes we have it consciously, but mostly unconsciously. I'm going to give you a couple of examples, which I hope you're going to love. So driving a car in the United States, as we all know, when we drive and we see a stop sign, what do we have to do? According to the U.S. culture, we have to make a complete stop, right? Complete stop. So, I lived in San Diego, have a California license, and I was out one night on a Tuesday. San Diego is a peaceful city. And I was driving uh, back home at 2.30 in the morning. Uh, the city was asleep. Nobody was around. I saw no cars. And I knew that 10 blocks before I got to my home, there was this crossing, right, with a stop sign. No traffic light, but a stop sign. And I was thinking in my head, I said, yeah, am I actually going to stop? Makes no sense. There's nobody around. It was all dark. So funny enough, I did reduce the speed, but I did cross it, right? Well, as soon as I did this, guess what? Brrr, 
people and the lights and the sounds. And, and I say to myself, well, Jesus Christ, where did these people come from? They must have been in my trunk. I never saw them, right? Well, cops are not stupid. Of course, they hide, right? And uh, so the officer came over and asked me, uh, do you know why I stopped you? Do you know why I pulled you over? And it's not, never a good idea to lie to a cop, right? So I said, yes, I do, officer. He said, so why did I stop you? Well, because I didn't do the complete stop. And he said, why didn't you do that? He said, because there was nobody around. Yeah, well, that doesn't matter. It says stop. I said, I know, I know. But look, there was just nobody around. Yeah, but it says stop. And I said, I understand that, officer, I understand that. But this should be for when cars are around, right, during the day. In the middle of the night, there was nobody. But it says stop. And I said, well, that's crazy, right? So that was my answer. Never a good idea to yell at the cop. Uh, and especially not uh, telling him that whatever he thinks or says is crazy, right? But uh, he let me go. Funny enough, he let me go. Good for me, right? Uh, he must have figured, well, maybe that guy is not that wrong after all, right? So anyway, so this was a self-reference criterion in action. But listen, I never thought that my culture now, the way of doing things my way, was superior to their culture. I never thought of that. So there was no ethnocentrism there, even though sometimes they overlap, right? And the other example, which is my favorite one, is when I recently came to this country 47 years ago, uh, the first few years I took trips to Austria because I missed my country, I missed my family, my friends, the food, and so on and so forth. So once or twice a year I went over there. But I always let them know that I was coming. So on one occasion I figured, I'm going to surprise all of them, right? I'm going to surprise all of them. And I didn't let them know. So I took the plane, flew over there. Once I was there and visited everybody, uh, okay, they were okay. Uh, not my father. He almost had a heart attack and he told me that. He was very angry. Don't you ever do that again, right? You gave me a heart attack. And uh, well, the others, I could see that they were kind of uncomfortable with me showing up like that. But now I want to go to my grandfather, who we call Opa in Austria. And he lived in this building four floors high. And I went up there, of course, unannounced. Knocked at the door, no answer. Knocked again, no answer. He was living alone. My grandmother had passed away, right, years earlier. So I figured, well, he's not here. I'll come back tomorrow. No big deal, right? No big deal. And as I was walking down, the stairs, uh, some neighbor came out of the third floor, from the third floor, and I looked at him and I said, excuse me, I, I just wanted to visit my grandfather, but uh, he seems to be asleep, and he didn't open the door. Could I use your phone so I can call him? And he said, sure, come on in. And so I called. And guess what? He answered the phone. And I said, hey, Opa, I'm here. I'm a floor below you. I'm coming up now. And he said, no, 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 no. Don't come up here. And I said, what do you mean? He said, no, no, no. Call me tomorrow so we can coordinate an appointment. And I said, what? Uh, this is not a pope I'm dealing with here, right? I'm not trying to get an appointment with a pope. So I said, you know what? I come from a country very far away, and I'm coming up now, OK? And I hung up. I was all angry, and I ran up the stairs. And I was figuring on the way up, I figured, maybe he's not alone. Maybe he has somebody in there. Maybe it's a girl. Maybe she's underage. Oh, no. I'm going to help him to not commit a fraud or a crime or something, right? So I knocked at the door. He finally opened. I ran through. I didn't even say hello to him. I ran through the apartment like a tornado, right? Like a twister, looking around all over the place. There was nobody there. And I said, Opa. Why didn't you open the door? And he said, well, you cannot come unannounced. And I said, of course I can. He said, not in this country you can't. And that's when I started thinking and I said, oh man, I made a mistake. Austrians don't like that. They don't do it like that. And I had forgotten about it, right? And I imposed what I now know is a Latin culture and I thought it was better, right? 
And so to make a long story short, uh, on that surprise trip, I came to visit all of them, but I had problems with every and each of them. We had arguments all over the place with my father and his new wife, with my mother and her new husband, with my brother and his always the same wife, my friends. <laughs> I had arguments with everybody, right? And so I finally cut my vacation short, and I said, I'm going to go to Spain. I had lived in Spain, and I said, Latin people will understand me better, right? So I took the plane and went there. And on the flight from Vienna to Barcelona, I was so angry, and um, I said, they're all wrong. What is wrong with these people, right? What is wrong? And suddenly it came to me and I realized, well, the common denominator, I, I had created all those conflicts with every and each of them in a different subject, right? And uh, that's when I knew I was responsible and I cried. Yes, boys do cry eventually, right? And years later, I went back to Austria. We had already forgotten about all this. I still observed things in my own country that I was not so much agreeing with anymore. But guess what I did? I kept everything to myself. I kept my mouth shut. And we had a wonderful time, right? So I was reducing tensions, conflicts, avoiding all that. I created social harmony with my family. Make sense? And here is now the big point of today's talk, in my case. Uh, what should we really do? First of all, we should teach our children from very first, when they, were, when they were very young, right? We should teach them. But in order to be able to do that, it's our responsibility as parents to start understanding what is culture, right? And the importance of it. We have to learn to understand culture and its differences. And then to not offend any culture or disrespect any culture or criticize or judge any culture. Does this make sense somehow? With the self-reference criterion, it is like overlapping a little bit with ethnocentrism. It's like when we judge or criticize some aspect of a particular culture, according to our own cultural standards. That is usually unconscious, but that does not necessarily mean the way I did it with my family in Austria, that I considered my new culture now superior to theirs. No, no, there was no ethnocentrism involved, okay? It was just the self-reference criterion. So what should we do? Let's get prepared. Let's understand what culture is. Let's find out about the, the differences, cultural differences. And let's embrace these, right? Because then we would have more diversity, more creativity for business. It will make us also, oh, I have a new one. Uh, this was the thing I wanted to mention. When we use the self-reference criterion and we are aware of it, then we can adopt our product, marketing, mix, commercial offer, ways of running a business or something, right? to the other culture that we're dealing with. We already mentioned that. But there's something else we can do. And you're going to be surprised when you hear that. And I have, I have lived through that. Uh, sometimes I think, why are these people doing that particular thing like that? And then I say, because we do it differently. And in a lot of occasions, I have come to the conclusion, funny, those people have a more practical way of doing it. It seems to be a smarter way of doing it, or no? So it's not only the self-reference criterion as such, okay, if it's unconscious, it's an unfortunate thing. If it's conscious, I adapt. But now I'm not only adapting, I'm actually enriching my own culture because I'm taking stuff from other cultures now, which I actually realize are better performed or done in that particular group. That's embracing cultural differences. So what to do? We have to spread that message everywhere, all the time, to just about everybody we know. And as far as I'm concerned, I believe we have just done this right now. Thank you so much. <laughs>